So remember the problem with the soup, where we had a bunch of different kinds of soup and we we're trying to count uh, how many different schedules we could make for which soups we're going to eat on which days. So for example, if we have, uh, let's say we have 10 different kinds of soup and we have four days uh, on which to eat the soups, um, and we argued previously, right, we can use the product rule um, in a slightly clever way and say, well, I can choose any one of the 10 soups uh, to eat on the first day, and the second day, um, I only have nine soups left, but I can choose any one of those nine, uh, and so on. So the answer is going to be, I have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 ways to uh, make a schedule of soups to eat. Okay, so uh, consider this related problem. What if we said, I now just want to count, I don't care anymore about the order that I eat the soups. What I want to count is, uh, how many different ways can I choose which four soups I'm going to eat? So, you know, maybe I say I'm going to eat, you know, tomato, chicken noodle, clam chowder, and um, uh, something else. And I don't care what order I'm going to eat them in, I just want to know, you know, which four out of the ten am I going to choose. <clears throat> so how many ways are there to do that? Um, so in order to think about that, we need to introduce another uh, principle, which is called, uh, we've had the product, sum, and subtraction rules, so probably this one is going to be the division rule. Okay, and uh, here's how it works. So suppose that I have um, a, di a bunch of different choices, um, but there's some sense in which I'm considering some of them to be the same. So they're not literally the same, but I don't care about the difference. Uh, I don't actually want to count them as being different. Um, that's the kind of situation where we need the division rule. So formally, we'll write it like this. So suppose we have n choices, um, but we want to consider some of them as being the same. Okay. And if there are always uh, exactly k choices that are the same as each other, right, then um, the total number of real choices are, I'll say, of really different choices. is, of course, n divided by k. And so this is really this is really just the product rule in reverse. So if we make a little grid like this, right, so I'm going to draw a big n on here. Okay, so I have, these are all my choices. I've got n of them. Okay, but some of them I want to consider as being the same. And so we'll say, you know, like this row, these are all the same, right? All the choices in this row, even though they are literally different, I don't care about the difference, and I want to think of them as being the same choice. And same for the, you know, this row also, these are all the same as each other. So this row, they're, they're the same as each other, but they're different from, from this row, okay? Um, and so on, and... If I have k things in each row, right? Um, each row corresponds to a really different choice. And how many rows are there? Of course, it's the total number of things n divided by the number of columns k. Um, so the number of rows is going to be n divided by k. Okay. Um, so let's do an example. How many ways can we uh, seat five people around a circular table uh, 
Um, but we only care about Uh, we only care about like who is sitting to the left and right of who. So I don't care, you know, specifically who is sitting in this seat, who is sitting in this seat. You know, if you've got the same person on your, if you've got certain people on your left and right, it doesn't matter where you're sitting. So we only care about who is sitting left and right of who. Okay, so let's think about this. So here's my table. I'm going to draw some seats on here. Okay, here's my table with some seats. Uh, I'm going to start by numbering the seats. So maybe we can number, you know, this is seat number zero, number one, number two, number three, number four. And I could say, well, uh, we can start by saying, you know, I could say there's five choices of who to seat uh, in this seat. And I've got then four choices of the remaining people who who to sit in uh, seat one, three, two, you know, so on. So that would be five factorial. But of course, that is counting, you know, specifically who is in this seat, who is in this seat, who is in this seat. But we said we don't actually care about that. So uh, the way to think about this is notice that if I told it once I've sit, uh, seated everyone, if I tell them all to stand up and you know move one seat. Uh, to their, you know, I guess that would be uh, left, right? If you're in seat I, please move to seat I plus one mod five. Um, they are all in different seats, but they're still sitting next to the same people, right? You still have the same person on your left and right because they moved also when you moved. So uh, those would be, even though they're different, I, I've counted them differently here. I want to think of them as being the same. And in fact, right, for any way of seeing people, uh, there's five ways to rotate them that I want to consider those all the same. Okay, uh, and so we can apply the division rule and say, well, uh, I've always got five different rotations that are all the same, uh, and I want to consider them all as really just being one choice. So I need to take this and just divide it by five. So that's really four factorial, which is. 24 ways uh, of seating them that are different. Um, as a related example, we could say, you know, what if we don't care about left and right? Right. That is now I only care about who you're sitting next to, but it doesn't matter who is on your right and who's on your left. If you have the same two people next to you, even if they're switched, that's the same. Um, well, we can do the same thing and say, well, we can start with this, but this is still too big, right? Because now I could say, okay, everyone kind of, if we sort of flip the table over in a mirror, right? Sort of say, okay, seat four becomes seat one, seat three becomes seat two and vice versa, and seat zero, you stay the same, right? That's now gonna be the same. Um, and so basically for every way I have of seating them, um, if I only care about who's to the left and right of each other, if I kind of flip them all over and switch left and right, that's going to be the same now. And so I just need to divide by another factor of two. Uh, and so this is going to be you know, five factorial divided by five, also divided by two, which is going to be 12. And it's actually a nice exercise to you know, like write these out. What are the 12 ways of seating people around a table if you don't care about exactly what seat they're in and you don't care about left and right, you just care about who's sitting next to who. Um, and you should convince yourself that there really are 12 of those. Um, we'll do one last example. We'll go back to the soup example that we started with. Okay, so so I've got right 10 soups and uh, I want to pick four of them, okay? And, but I, again, I don't care uh, what order they're in, I just care about which four that I pick. So uh, we can start by saying, well, there's the number of schedules is 10 times nine times eight times seven schedules, okay? Um, 
Now, for a given schedule, right, there's other schedules that I want to consider the same. So in particular, you know, given some schedule, it has four soups in a particular order. If I switch any of the soups around, but keep the same soups, then I don't care about that difference. I want to think of that as that, it's a different schedule, but I want to think of it as being the same. It's the same choice of four soups. Um, so the question is, well, how many different schedules are there for a given four soups that are all the same? Well, given four soups, I have four choices of which one to put in the first day, then three choices of which one to put on the second day, uh, two choices, one choice, right? So there's really four factorial or 24 ways to put those four soups in some order. Um, and so the division rule tells me, well, you just divide by that, right? And that uh, takes care of um, saying that we want to think of those all as being the same, and that's going to give me the answer of how many ways I can choose these. So, uh, so let's say that's how many schedules, and there's four factorial, which is 24 ways to uh, put a given four soups in some order. So by the division rule, There are 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, we, can, we can cancel some things here, right? So the 4 and the 2 cancel with the 8, and we'll cancel the 3 with 3 from the 9. So this will leave us with 3 times 7 is 21, times 10 is 210 ways to pick. Four soups. 